Good morning, my table. Hey, praise the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he's worthy to be praised. We welcome all of you this morning to this glorious house of the Lord. We thank God that he's able to be in our life and that he chose to be in our life. For God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, and he gave, and he still gives. Amen. So we thank God that he's still a giving God, that he's still a God of second chances. We thank him every day. We don't take God for granted. At least I don't take God for granted. I know who woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Do I have any witnesses this morning that he woke you up? And he started you on your way. So we welcome you all for coming out this morning and choosing to be a part of this service today. And you could have chosen something else, but you chose Mount Tabor this morning. And we thank God for you. And for those who will be watching later on, we thank God for you all. Continue to keep us in your prayer as we continue to pray for you. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is coming from a very familiar scripture, Psalm 116, uh, one of my favorites. Psalm 116. I love the Lord. Because he has heard my voice and my supplication. Because he inclined his, his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The people of God said. What shall I return to the Lord for all of his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will bring my house to the Lord. Oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. The child of your servant girl, you have loosed my bonds. I will offer you a thanksgiving, a sacrifice, and call on the name of the Lord. Let us read together. In the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, and I know most of you know this song from the hymns and it is tis so sweet to trust in Jesus tis so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest Upon his promise, just to know the say the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more, Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. 
our confession. Our confession uh, today is when we confess our lives before God, we are calling on God who promises not only to hear us, but to heal us with forgiveness and with hope. Join me now as we go to the Lord in our silent prayer moment. Let us bow our heads. Most merciful God, we come to you, and Lord, we know that we cut you to the heart. Loving God with the silly choices that we make. We had hoped our lives would reflect your presence, but those around us see how empty we are. We had hoped our words might bring healing, but they end up hurting those we love the most. We had hoped to find Jesus, but cannot see him in all those you send our way. Week by week, day by day, we open our lives before you, acknowledging ways we sometimes lose track of you, Father God. We are driven and fueled, feel busy, so we let other things come in the way of your presence and in the way of our lives. Change us, oh God. Upend us, and we don't know where to turn, but change us so that we may know who you are. Oh God, how foolish we are to think we can go on without your mercy. But Lord God, forgive us when we close our eyes to your presence. Dear Lord, heal our brokenness. Bind up our wounds. Renew us in love. Place us on the path of healing. And help us to be people who will bring compassion and caring to others. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time we have a selection by Brother Russell. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. my friend, you've been my friend, Lord, you've been my friend, you've been my, my friend, Lord, you've been my friend, you've been my friend. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been good, you've been so good. Lord, you've been good, you've been so good. Oh, you've been so I just want to thank you, Lord. Then you save my soul, save my soul. Lord, you save my soul, you save my soul. Oh, you save my soul. I just want to thank 
you, Lord. You made a way. You made a way. Oh, Lord, you made a way. Lord, you made a way. You made a way. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Russell. Amen. God is good. He always have a ram in the bush. Amen. And amen. Ever since... I don't know about you, but ever since I've been allowed to cross that milestone movement of that tender age of 50, <laughs> I've been in a very close devotional place with God and, and examining people who are connected to my life. For the past few sermons that I've brought to you and the wrestling that the Lord and I have been going through and he kept me in today, I pray that, that that personal struggle will somehow be a benefit and blessing to someone body in this church today. I pray that your personal conflicts that you've been wrestling with God with will somehow bring you closer to God. I, I want to invite you to hear from the Lord this morning from two passages of scripture. In the Old Testament, the first may be an unknown story found in the book of 1 Kings and the 12th chapter. And, and once you found that, just uh, let me know by saying amen. 1 King, just a little bit, write a little bit, book right before uh, Proverbs. There is a well-known, familiar scripture as well. So Proverbs and 1 King, 1 King chapter 12, and then Proverbs 27. 1 Kings chapter 12, I want to read some selection, a, a few selected verses for your hearing as we reference the reading of God's holy word. Amen. In the book of 1 Kings, the 12th chapter from the New King James Version, beginning in verse number 6, it reads as follows. Then King Rehoboam counted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived, and he said, how do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, if you will be a servant to those people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he rejected the advice which the elders had given him and consulted the young men and that he had grown up with who stood before him. Verse number 12, so Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day as the king had directed, saying, Come back to me the third day. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the advice which the elders had given him. And he spoke to them according to the advice of the young man, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips. But I will chastise you with scourges and scorpions. Verse number 20. Now it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jer Jeroboam had come back, they sent for him and called him to the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none who followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. Now, very quickly, Proverbs 27 and verse number 17, a very familiar saying, as iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Amen. Praise God for the reading of his holy word. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. 
do me a favor, look at your neighbor and give them and tell them the title of today's sermon. Tell them this, do you make me better? I look at you, do you make me better? Amen. <laughs> do you make me better? I need to share uh, with you, uh, it's probably a violation of my HIPAA, that for a few weeks back in December, I, I had not been feeling the best. Uh, I had some problems with fatigue and coughing and trouble sleeping at night. And yeah, I know, I hear your mind saying, oh, he must have had COVID. No, I, I didn't have COVID. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. And, and I was, these things I don't rarely do. I'm usually, I, I hit the bed, I'm out like that. I've had a mild recurring headache, so after dealing with it for a few days, after I was doing some uh, part-time work with UPS, I decided to take a break from my male ego and go see the doctor. I went to see the doctor, and after the doctor looked at my vitals and did some examination, even some blood work, she came back and she said, Mr. Porter, your problem and the reason you're always tired, the reason you can't uh, get enough sleep, the reason you're re restless and at night, and the reason you have mild recurring headache, we diagnose you that you have an iron deficiency. You, you don't have just a sinus infection. That's where your coughing coming from. But you have an iron deficiency. And I, I, did, I, I, I didn't really understand what she meant. She said, well, you don't have enough iron in your diet and in your blood, and as a result, you can't get enough rest. You're always tired, and you have a mild recurring headache and due to your iron deficiency, and I need you to take some iron supplements. And so I went and bought me some iron supplements and take them, and, you know, I went back to sleeping just like a baby. <laughs> because when you don't have enough iron in your life, you will never perform the best that you can. Uh, uh, well, I'm not a medical doctor. And some people call me Reverend Doctor. I want to come by and diagnose that some of us, one of the major problems in our life is that you suffer from a spiritual iron deficiency. Can I get a witness this morning? I, I'm not talking about iron supplements that you buy at CVS or Walgreens, but rather in a biblical sense, for, for, for it is Solomon, this writer of Proverbs, this, who declares that iron, you know what iron is. Iron is, 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 is someone in your life who sharpens you. Iron is someone who makes you better. That you really need some people in your life who are not just satisfied uh, to let you remain where you are. But understand that their call in your life <clears throat> is to truly make you better. And, and, and for some of us, we suffer because our lives are filled with people who really don't make us better. You know that the only number that adds nothing to an equation is zero. And so if you got people in your life who are not adding the quality and character of your life, you know they are zero. Don't, don't y'all look at nobody. Don't you look at nobody. They are zero. If you browse through the Bible and search through scripture, you will find that God is uh, intimately uh, and ultimately concerned about who's connected to your life. He, he, he takes this intimately. And at no time... <laughs>
stagnant. You need people in your life who make you better. Amen. Amen. Hold on one second. Let me let me hook this one up.
you ain't always right. Mm -mm. We think we always right. Amen. And I know I've said it before. Most of the time, 99.8% I'm right. What you say, sis? Mm -hmm. But I ain't always right. And sometimes you wind up in places that the children of God should not land. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I, I'm talking about you this morning, yeah? Sometimes you get in places the children of God should not be in. Come on and help me right now. You go places that you know you shouldn't go. Uh, 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 you give your, yourself away sometimes. And you, you, you know you did at, at, at this place over here on Mark Street. And you ought to be over here on Trey Street. You, you give yourself away. If you, don't wave your hand. Don't give yourself away this morning. But if I'm right this morning, just wink. Just wink. Just wink. I won't give you away. Just wink at me. But you know, sin has a way of, of sticking and binding us in places that the Lord does not want us to be. And the problem when you get stuck in sin is that many of us then surround ourselves with enablers. Because for many of us, the true test of fidelity of your friendship is how much do you like me? And how much will you lie for me? Come on, come on, come on. You ain't my friend if you ain't going to cover me. Uh, we, 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 we are around folk who, who cannot confront us because if they, if they start calling out our stuff, you know what we do. We start calling out. We start putting their stuff out in the street to make it sound like they're worse than we. Help me, somebody. And so you get stuck because there's no one around you who can conf confront you with your sin to pull you away from where you are. But the Lord says, watch this, that the reason I've used confronters in your life is because godly confrontation leads to repentance. That one of the ways I... Uh, Get you out of a place of sin and, and send someone else in your life, God says, it, it's in order for them to confront you that you may repent of your sin. Now, that, that's some word right there. Because a lot of times folk come to us the wrong way. They may, they may be coming on behalf of God. But sometimes they present themselves the wrong way. And we ain't hearing that. Amen. And we we'll tell them, you can back off, give me 50 feet. Because I ain't hearing nothing you say because you, it ain't coming out your mouth the right way. And so if you're going to come to me, come right, come correct. Because I can say step back 50 feet. Well, sometimes we just don't want to say anything. But the bottom line is, line is that I need, you all need, we need folk around us who can... In our private times, in our private space, to, we need folk who can speak a true word every once in a while. Somebody who can help us edify Christ Jesus. Somebody who can build us up to push us to the place where I want more Jesus in my life. And, 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 and not somebody who just come against us and put our stuff in the street all the time. Out, say out, somebody. So if you read the Bible, you'll find... That God uses people who will confront you. When David was stuck in his sin with Bathsheba, God sends a prophet by the name of Nathan. And Nathan comes and with a true word for David. David comes and he tries to give this little old story about a man who has a lamb and, and, and what he would do. And, and Nathan said, well, if a poor man came to you, and he gave you the only little lamb that he had. What would you do, David? David said, I'll take that lamb and kill it. And then David said, why you ask, Nathan? Nathan said, because you the man. You took Uriah's wife when you shouldn't have. 
But I can see David. I don't know if you can imagine what David did, but David, was a, he was a king, so he was up like this on a big wall in, in his castle, and, and Jezebel come out one night. She was taking a shower, and David could see everything. Split splash, she was taking a bath. All about Saturday night. David came out there. He saw her. He said like that songwriter said, I want her. And he sinned. He couldn't have left it alone, but David sinned. And he needed somebody to confront him. When Ahab and Jezebel have wrongly stolen the property of Naboth, God sends Elijah into Ahab's life to confront him with godly truth. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, the standard of friendship should not be how much they'll lie for you, but how much they'll say the truth to you. Now hear me, hear me. You, you, you know it's godly confrontation when there's no threat or exposure to you. God, God, though, uh, though, those who are sent by God don't come back blackmailing and trying to threaten you and, and let you know that they're going to public with whatever you did. When you have friends like that, you better get rid of them real quick. The Bible says they came to you based on Galatians 6, private, and speak to you about the sin in your life and say, I love you too much to expose you. But I love you too much to leave you in the place where I found you. If, if you got a friend like that, you better hold on to them. That's the kind of friend I want. Somebody that if I'm doing wrong and when I do wrong, they can come to me and say, look, Timothy, uh, uh, you might want to rethink what you're doing. And I'm going to say, why? And then they give me some godly truth and I just start crying because I know God don't want me in the place that I'm in right now. And they're telling the truth. If you love me, speak the truth to me. If you love me, don't leave me where the Lord huh, is not in my life. If you love me, don't threaten to expose me, but speak truth to me and confront me. Do you have a confronter in your life? Do you have a confronter in your life? But can I tell you number three? You need a confronter and you need a comforter in your life. But number three is you need a challenger in your life. Can I just make it simple? Here it is, here it is, here it is. You need someone in your life whose godliness gets on your nerve. You know the kind of folk I'm talking about? The kind of folk they're always talking about Jesus kind of folk when they when they say they're going to pray you know they mean they're going to pray all night long kind of folk when you ask them to be your prayer partner you regret it because they're calling you every day <laughs> folk that in every, every every word out of their mouth is the Bible says this, the Bible says this, the Bible says you need some folk who, whose godliness irritates you because it exposes a deficiency in your discipleship that causes you to grow to another level. Go on to preach, Pastor. You need some folk who, who get on your last nerve to, to make you realize you don't pray like you should pray and you don't read the Bible like you should and you don't walk with God the way you ought to walk in and they become an example to motivate you and to grow you. Mm, I, I, I know significant differences between the way I, uh, uh, I paint and the way I used to paint. I, I've noticed that over the past few years and and the more that I expose myself to art galleries and people who are better than I am at art, because I thought for a long time I was the bomb until I went to some of these galleries and I saw, I said, what the, how did they, is that a photograph? <laughs> and so I started exposing myself to all kind of artists all over the United States. And it's something about when you are gathered with the best artists from all over other, of, other states. 
I notice that I have a little more passion about my work, a little more confident when I get around some better artists. And so now when I, when I go to the different shows, I, I talk with the different artists in my field and, 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 and that are more established than I am who's been painting way longer than I have, and I know, church, that now when I go to art galleries and I enter my work in and out, I begin to win ribbons. Before, I didn't win no ribbons. Now, I'm getting ribbons and some money. Now, don't tell me God ain't good. Now, don't, don't tell me if you don't use the resources that God give you that you won't be better in life. I said I will never grow uh, uh, competing with folk at my level. Now, people, when they were at my level, I knew I was the best. But then I stepped out and, and met some people who, uh, who, 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 who did some mighty good stuff, who are bigger and better than I am and, 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 and more polished than I am. And if you're stuck in your walk with God, you better find some folk that love the Lord more, that talk to God more, that read their word more, and step your game up. It's, it's time, to, it's time to, uh, uh, to stop this playing stuff. Oh, uh, we, We've been playing church for a long time. We got to step our game up. If we want to get to the kingdom of God, we better learn how to step our game up. Quit all this, this willy mouth stuff and say, I'm going to do this. If you ain't going to do it, baby, quit talking about it. Because if you don't have a challenger, the devil will make you become satisfied with your progress. Okay. I'm going to preach, I'm going to preach. I hear you saying, preach it, boy, preach it. The devil, let me tell you what the devil will do. He will convince you that you ought to be satisfied with what you don't do anymore as opposed to what you need to do. He wants you to stay just where you are. He don't want you to grow in the word of God. And you'll say, well, I already know the word of God. Well, I know it too. But I declare every time I open this book, the Lord showed me something different. I, I preach some messages from the same scripture 10, 15 times. But every time I preach it, church, I declare God put something new in that word. But the devil will convince you, Sister Emily, you, you okay just where you are. You don't need to move. Just stay where you are. Uh, do the same things that you did years ago. You don't need to move. Just stay where you are. Stay traditional. Don't move forward. Same old, same old. But can I give you number four? Number four is you need a counselor. You need someone who got some wisdom. And then you receive it. You need someone who can advise you in some difficult situations. Amen. And, and a lot of times the reason we stay where we are is we, we, we don't seek counsel. But there are some people out here that can help you get to where you need to get to. So you need a counselor. You need somebody who's got some wisdom. Let, let, let me tell you why you need a counselor, Brother Bob. Some folk are not going to like this. But let, let me tell you why you need a counselor, because you are not always right. I know you think every thought you think is right, but sometimes your thoughts are wrong. Can I get a witness? I know, I know, I know you're holy. Ghost feel. But sometimes your discernment is a little bit off. I know you're smarter than anything around you, but sometimes your perception is skewed just a little bit. That you don't see things the way they really are. The Bible teaches us that in, in, when we listen to wise counsel, that makes us wise. But a fool rejects wise counsel. And so Rehoboam, he had two problems. And I want to share 
uh, with you, and, and they are when, when, when he was, has surrounded himself with his friends, he surrounded himself with people who were lower uh, than him and, and had received his wisdom as king and, and, and just say yes to whatever he wanted. And sometimes we do that. We surround ourselves with people who are a little bit lower than us and who will say yes to everything we, we do. He made himself the smartest person in the world. And you heard me say it before. If you're the smartest person in the world, your circle is too small. If you're the best in the circle, your circle is too small. You need some folk around you who are wiser than you. And the biggest problem Rehoboam had is that he rejected the counsel of elders. He didn't want to receive wisdom and of some folk that had been around the block a couple of times or two. Can I just drop this on you? My mom used to say this to me and to all of her children. You don't get old being stupid. That, that one of the worst things in the world you can do is just hang around yourself with people your age. You need some elder folk in your life. And so I, I, I really wasn't allowed to hang around people who didn't have nothing going on because if my mom saw that person, why are you hanging around that person? I, I knew so-and-so back then, and I knew her, their kin folk, and they weren't about nothing, and you, uh, no, you ain't hanging around them. You need some folk to uh, farther up the road from you who can share with you the wisdom of gray hair, and who, who know what it's like to, to, to be where you've been and give you some counsel to how you're going to get through some stuff. Y'all, one, one of the best moments of my life is, a, and I'm about to share something I probably shouldn't, but one of the best moments of my life was when I was uh, at a church in East Bend, North Carolina. Uh, we used to get up early on a Saturday morning on some special occasions. We go up to the fire station. At the fire station, they had these long shelters, and under these shelters, they had these big grills, and and they allowed people to come with the church and cook some stuff. and And I used to call that the magical ministry place called the shelter. That's what I used to call it. Uh, now, now, Brother Channing, he, he, he might know about this shelter because he, he, his dad used to pass over there and, and, and we go up to that shelter on some certain Saturday mornings. The church would, would order all this chicken to cook. We didn't have hot dogs. We knew it was a church down here at Mount Tabor had the best hot dogs in the town, so we didn't mess with no hot dog. We did chicken place. And in, in that neighborhood, we, they, they, they were fixed chicken plates for people in the neighborhood. Because there were some people who needed some food. And so they, they, they go up to the fire station, and the fire station would let us use these grills. It was free. They wouldn't charge us anything because we were part of the community. And, and, and so we went up there. We put all this chicken on the grill. Now, now this, this was some, something typically done by the older men in the church. The younger men, we, we really didn't get in at all all that stuff. We, this was the older men of the church. But this particular time, they, they asked some of us young uh, whippersnappers to come out and help them grill this chicken. And You know, I, I could cook. You know, I, I've been cooking for a little while. I didn't mind going up there cooking, but there were some brothers that couldn't cook. So they wanted us to come out and just hang out with the older men of the church. And so we said, okay, we're we, we down with that. Now, this is a gathering of some of the seasoned men at Bimbo Chapel and some of the older guys who, who could show enough grill some food and, and you know, they were, they were good at giving some, some, some of us some good counsel. And, and I know what they were all about. They're trying to talk to us about some of the things after they leave what they wanted us to do. And so some of us young guys... You know, they, 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 they got up early on Saturday morning, they came, they, they got up before the sun came up. And I'm saying, man, who get up this early on a Saturday morning? I get up early, I go to the shelter with some of my friends, and 
My uncle, who was about two years older than me, we all got up there with the brothers named Sam Kimbrough, Pete Pereer, and uh, Willie Phillips, and Bill Glenn, and, and they, they, they were from old school. They played baseball with some of these black Negro uh, baseball teams. They were really good, and they, they began to talk to us about the old times and what used to go on in the olden time. And we just sitting up there, they spread the chicken with us, water spread and making it tender and everything, putting a barbecue on it. I mean, it's smelling good. They, all the time they spray it. They talking. You hear what I say? Uh-huh. Come on over here. Get, get this bottle. Spray it. Spray it like this. We spraying chicken and it's, it's smelling good and, and all that good stuff. And, and they still canceling us. They telling us, now after we leave, this is what y'all need to do. And we're listening to some of the best time in our life, some of the young guys would stand around while they were teaching about basting and flipping chicken, but they, they were teaching us about life. And there's nothing greater than surrounding yourself with some older folk who walk with God. And that's the key right there. Some older folk who walk with God. And who have climbed the mountaintop of life and can look back over their life and give you some wise counsel. And I thank God, I thank God that he put a shelter up there in East Bend for some meditation because we showed up need meditation. There's nothing like having wise counsel. So you need a comforter. You need a confronter. You need a challenger. You need a counselor. But let me give you number five so we, so we can hurry up and get out of here. I see, I see it on your face. and I'm, I'm ready to go too. But number five, you need a co-benefactor. A co-benefactor. A co now, now that, that may be a little hard to discern what that means, but I, I want to tell you that each and every one of us in this place this morning, you are a beneficiary. Every one of us in here, a beneficiary. Do, do you know what it means to be a beneficiary? Huh? Well, for some of those who don't, it means to receive a blessing from somebody else. Let me just tell you in case... You didn't know if you were a beneficiary of the grace and mercy of God. You are because God don't have to give you grace. God don't have to give you mercy. But because of who he is, you are a beneficiary of God's grace and God's mercy. You are a beneficiary of the favor of God. You are a beneficiary of the faithfulness of God. If you didn't get it, let me put it like this. God's been good to you. The Lord has blessed you. The Lord has given you abundance. The Lord has met your needs. The Lord has favored you. The Lord has rained down in your life. As a matter of fact, I want to I want to pause there and give a sermon, uh, a, a, a quick survey, a sermonic survey. Uh, is there anybody at Mount Tabor early on a Sunday morning who knows that it is the Lord's mercy? That we are not consumed. Anybody in here know that this morning? That the Lord has been good to you. That the Lord has made ways for you. That the Lord has opened doors for you. huh? That the Lord has been gracious to you. That every time I have a result of the goodness of God. Matter of fact, nudge somebody and tell them. God's been good to me. Oh, God's been mighty good to me. Oh, oh, Saint Sister Lizzie used to say it like this: The Lord has smiled on me, yeah. huh? The Lord has blessed me. The Lord has given me more than I could ever give myself. God's been good to me. But when you when you are a beneficiary, the Lord demands that you be a blessing to somebody else. Sister White knows more than anybody how to be a blessing to somebody. She, she goes and she, she builds these places up for, for homeless people to live in. She helps them out. She gives this and she gives that. And sometimes she gives her own money. You got to be a blessing if you want to be blessed. That the reason the Lord blesses you is for you to learn to bless someone else. Now hear me, the greatest joy in life is not getting a bigger cup to hold or to hold more. One of the greatest joys in life is to allow your cup to run over so that you can begin to bless somebody else. That's what it's all about. My cup 
runneth over. God says, listen, if you want to be better, you got to find someone else to bless. You ought, you ought to be looking for a brother whom you can touch. You ought to be looking for some young brother who you can be a mentor to. Looking for a sister who, whose life you can change. Looking for someone that's hungry whom you can use the blessing of God to give them so that they can be blessed. You ought to be one standing at Starbucks, ordering your coffee, and look around and see a brother in line and say, let me buy you a cup of coffee today. You ought to be one that every week you put a $20 bill in your pocket and, and, and bless somebody. And when you come to church, say, Pastor, I just want to bless you with this 20 But well, we ought to be a blessing. I'm just picking. I'm just picking. We ought to be a blessing to somebody. Maybe the next time you're in the grocery store and you see this sister with three kids and they look hungry, you ought to be able to willing to say, let me buy your groceries today. Let me be a blessing to you. It won't hurt us. And I bet if we say that, we probably got a cupboard full of food at home. It won't hurt us to buy some, some grocery for somebody who needs it. That's what it's all about, church. How can you make me better? But I want to challenge you to experience the joy, and we we'll get ready to get out here, the joy of blessing someone else because you need a co-benefactor, you need a confronter, you need a comforter, you need a challenger, and you need a counselor. You need a co-benefactor. And, and let me tell you this last thing uh, that you need. You need a celebrator. You, you, you need a, a party person in your life. You, you need someone who refuses to let you stay depressed. You need someone who refuses to let you be oblivious to the goodness of God. You, you need folk around you to give you some glory all the time. Back, back, back in the fall, of 1979, see, I, I spent six weeks, six days, 23 hours, 23 hours, 37 minutes, and about 10 seconds, pledging Alpha Phi Alpha Incorporated, 1906, the first, whoop, ah, whoop. Uh, 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 no, because, I, I, and, and I graduated with this brother who, who, who was on line with me. We called ourselves the Odyssey Six. Yes. I came up with that name. I thought that was a nice name, Odyssey Six. And we stepping and we doing all this. But we had one brother behind me, number six. Yes. He liked to party uh -huh. all the time. He, he, I don't care what went down. Weekend come, he said, oh, it's time to party. Yeah. I mean, he did that kind of party that Beyonce Andre 3000 used to do. I know some of y'all too young. Y'all know about Y'all too old. Y'all know nothing about no Beyonce Andre 2, 3000. You know, you know how some folk wait on Friday? It could be Tuesday afternoon. Class is over. He said, let's go party. He will party when homework got done. He will party if, if, if we won a game. He, he, he wanted to party all the time. And I realized that he, he, he was a brother in my life who never let me get consumed with how bad things were going in my life. Because every time things looked down, he come along and said, let's go party, Porter. Back in the day, I could dance. I go party, and, and I've, I've, I've come to realize, i come by to tell you that, that that's the kind of Christian you need in your life. Somebody who's got the spirit of David who don't mind dancing and dancing until they dance out of their clothes. David said, he came back from war. David said, I got to dance for the Lord. Somebody don't mind like, being like David said, I will bless the Lord. At all times, his praises shall Continually be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see how sweet the Lord is. I will magnify his name. And I refuse to let you sit like a bump on the log and not realize how good God's been to you. Uh, now, let, let me tell you why you've got to have a collaborator or, or a celebrator. Because every now and then, life gets so rough for you. 
And, and, and even you come to the house of God sometime and, 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 and with an attitude in your mind, with a chip on your shoulder, and, and I don't want anybody to touch me today. I don't, I don't want anybody to talk to me today. I don't want you to tell me to look at my neighbor and touch them. I don't want you to give me a high five. I, I, I'm, I'm tired of you. I come to church and you tell me to look at my neighbor. And so whenever you get in that place, the Lord will inevitably sit you next to somebody who in the middle of Pastor Porter's sermon will stand up and say, oh, praise the Lord. Yeah. Woo! He will intentionally put you next to somebody so that they can get on your nerve and show them, show you how to celebrate the goodness of God. They just want to stand up and pump their hands and, and just want to say thank you all the time and, 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 and you want to just tell them, shut up! <laughs> Sit down somewhere. And the next time somebody looks at you like that, you just nudge them and tell them, girl, I'm just trying to help you out. I'm just trying to help you know how to praise Lord up in this house because every time I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul gets a little happy. And I want everybody to know that I'm a celebrator. Do I have a witness in here this morning? Do I have any celebrators in the house who know the goodness of God? Who know the Lord is my light and my salvation? Who knows that he, knows he that dwells in a secret place of the Most High abides in the shadow? Well, goodbye, saints. Goodbye, saints. May the Lord bless you real mighty good. But, but I have to take it from the gospel of cool in the game. There's a party going on over here. A celebration that lasts throughout the year. So bring your good times and your laughter too. Come on, everybody. Celebrate God with you. Oh, uh, we got to celebrate God. Listen, listen. Listen, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm through. I'm through. If you don't have a celebrator, you will be embarrassed to testify about the goodness of God. If you don't know how to celebrate, you will be embarrassed. And you know what that word embarrassed means? means shame. You be ashamed of God. And God said, if you're ashamed of me, for if there's no one in your circle that knows how to thank you, if there's no one around you that knows how to say thank you to God, to God be the glory, you will shut your lips in fear of how you're going to respond. But when you get around some celebrators in the house of God, some folk that rejoice in the goodness of God, it ought to encourage you to celebrate God's goodness in your life. Uh, to know that there are some people on my pew who speak my language, who know how good God's been, because you cannot grow without a comforter, a confronter, a challenger, a counselor, a co-benefactor, or a celebrator. And if the truth be told, that's why the Lord created the church. I want to say this uh, definitively that, that I don't believe the primary purpose of the church is for people to be saved in this place. For if the truth be told, the gospel we carry in us, we carry to the streets, and it's not the preacher's job to preach to the unsaved is your job to preach to the unsaved. It's your job to tell somebody about Jesus so that they can say, well, where did you hear that from? You said down at Mount Tabor on Mount Tabor Drive. They said, well, I want to come and see if I can see Jesus in your service. So if you tell folk about Jesus, they're going to come. The, the, the word said that somebody said, if you plant the tree, it will grow. But if you ain't putting no seed in the ground, don't expect pastor to help it grow. If you want it to grow, put it in the ground. Say, pastor, I'm bringing this pot to you. Help it to grow. We got to do, do our part, church. Now watch this, and I'm through. Watch this. That by the time you get in the church, You've already gotten them to Jesus. If you've already told them, you got them. And they'll come. Speak to them. There's a lot of folk out there that just wait for you to come up to them and, and tell them and share your story about Jesus. And maybe you didn't learn it at, at this church. 
Maybe you didn't find Jesus at this church. But since you come into this church, you ought to be able to tell people, come to the church that I go to. Because if, if you come into a church that's feeding you the word, you ought to tell people about the word of God. And if the word of God ain't being taught, leave the church. And find a church that preaches the word of God. But we all are servants of the most high God. And we all ought to be talking the word of God to somebody. Amen. Church primarily is a place where weary soldiers come to be refreshed. For we who've been on the battlefield, we come for comfort. So we come by to be confronted. We come to be challenged. We come to be wise counsel. We come to find someone to bless. And we find someone to celebrate our life with us. Knowing what God has done in our life. God's been so good to us. That we ought to be willing to share our story with somebody. Because we can look around and say, look what the Lord has done for me. He's been mighty good to me. He, he's been so good. I just want to tell somebody about his goodness. And, and he's, he is so good. He will bless you. He will bl if you bring one person to God, he'll bless you with many. That's why when you get to the gate and he says, you've been faithful over a little. Now, come on in because I'm getting ready to bless you exceedingly, abundantly, better than you ever could think in your life. And who don't want to hear that? I want to hear it. I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Now we get ready to party up in heaven. And the Bible speaks of it. There's a celebration going on up there. There's the rejoicing going on up there. I guarantee you ain't going to get up there and you see somebody sitting on a, on a, on a stoop on the corner with their head hanging down. Mm -mm. When you get to heaven, it's, it's going to be rejoicing all the time. And so that's what we do as people of God. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Let's see. Sister Tawana, let me pull up the prayer list. You asked me at the beginning of service and I got to throw it off. Amen. I prayer requests. Let us go to God in prayer. Well, you know, last week I did affirmation faith at the end, so let me do the affirmation of faith now so we won't have anybody coming up to me after church saying, well, Pastor, you know you forgot to do the affirmation of faith. Amen. Amen. We do it. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he should come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, again, we just, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being good and gracious to us. Thank you for how you woke us up this morning and God, you just put breath in our body. You gave us a reasonable portion of our mind and strength, Father God, and we just want to thank you. We, we thank you for how your grace and mercy covers us, Father God, while we out doing our thing, but your, your grace and mercy is right there to cover us. So, Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for how you kept us and 
how you're keeping us, Father God. Thank you for how you continue to give us uh, the Holy Spirit to give us discernment, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for how you continue to grow us in your knowledge, Father God. We just want to thank you that every day that we live, Father God, you continue to press into us your word, Father God, that gives us strength to go on, that gives us strength to walk on, that get, regulates our mind, Father God, that we can continue to read the word of God. We just want to thank you right now, Father God, because you've been so good to us, Father God, had you not been so good, we wouldn't know what to do. But Father, we thank you right now because you are so good, you are so gracious, and we just thank you, Father God. We thank you for your holy, your your your, your blessed Son Jesus Christ, who who died on the cross, Father God, for our sins. We thank you, Father God, that He didn't have to do it, but He did. He did it for us. He, you loved us so much. That you sacrificed your son. And then he turned around and gave his life freely that we might have life. And so, Father, we don't take that for granted. We just love you with every ounce in our bodies. We love you, Father God. And we just asking today, what is it that you need me to do, God? I want to be more like Jesus. I want to be more like what you call Jesus to do. I want to be uh, your servant, Father. I want to serve your people, Father God. I want to be the best that I can be for you, God. And so, Father, as we sit here with our eyes closed and our head bowed, our question is, what can we do? And how can I make somebody in my life better than they are? How can I do that? And I realize that I need the help of the Holy Spirit. I need God in my life. I need Jesus to tell me, whisper in my ear and say, this is how you should do it. This is where you should go. These are the people I need you to talk to. So help us, God, to be all that you need us to be. So now, Father, as we come to the end and we know that we have people on our prayer list, Father God, who's, who's sick, Father God, who's traveling, who's going through several different things. But, Father, we, we want to pray for the Fab Five and Randy. We want to pray for Sylvia and Randy Young. He had to go back to the hospital. They run tests. We don't know what the results are yet. But, Father, we know that you have all kind of healing power. But most of all, we trust your will. Whatever your will is for that family, we trust you, Father God. We pray for Sister Tina Cowan, Sister Lenora Reed, and Kenny Green, and Neil Waddell, and Xavier, and Micah Steele. They just got married. Aaliyah Wilson. For continued peace and provision. We pray for the sick and the shut in, Father God. We pray for those who, who have not given us their name, but Father God, we pray for those who, who, who need some prayer. So, Father, those who are not on the list that I didn't call, Father God, you know where they are. And in the master's name of Jesus Christ, I ask, Father, that you go to where they are, Father God, and see to their every need. We, we pray for those up. Uh, Safe travel that got back, Brother John and Brother George, for coming back to church. We, it's good to see those folk. We thank God that he woke up this morning, 98 years old, and said, Lord, I need to be in your presence today. We thank God for Brother Patterson for going over to pick him up. We thank God. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And no, I don't say his name because he need the flowers. But Brother Patterson knows. He don't need verification. And none of us need verification. We just got to do what God has called us to do. And if God is pleased, that's all we need. So we thank God for those who are traveling on the highway. We thank God for those churches that do not have a pastor. We thank God that... And pray that God will send a pastor to these churches. How can the people survive without a pastor? How can the word be preached without a pastor? So we thank God 
And we know these churches will soon have someone come and to preach for them. To lead them and guide them and help them the, the way that the Lord have instructed them to be. We thank you, God. No, everything haven't been rosy. And, but we thank you, God, for the things you've done. We thank God for the minister of music who's out sick today. We pray that his, your hand of mercy would touch her, Father God. So when it's all said and done, when we cried our last tear, we can still look to heaven and say, thank you, Lord. We can look to heaven and we can pray the prayer that the disciples prayed when they said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Mount Tabor. We thank you for everything, God, that you've done. We, we thank the people of God who continue to give with give a five and, and those who bring their offerings every Sunday. We thank God for the women's circle who does this birthday offering, we thank God for it because it goes out so many places. And we thank Sister Kay, who is the chairperson. Who, what are you now? Presbyterian women. Recording the secretary. We thank God for the Presbyterian women. Sister DeLores, keep up the good job. And Sister Tara. All those things mean a lot to the church and the survival of the church. So we thank God. We thank God. And we thank God for the leaders of this church. And I think Sister Carolyn was going to remind me, and I need to say this. Uh, I just need word to get out to all the deacons that I want to meet with all the deacons. So we can sort of get some things rolling. Uh, whoever can get that call out, if you can get all the deacons, find out one day that they all can meet at the same time so I can meet with them. So we can talk out some stuff. Amen. So please just give, us a, give, them a, give the deacons a call. Find out when everybody can meet at one time and then give me a call. So I can set a scheduled time to meet with all the deacons. Amen. Uh, thank you for doing that for me. We just want the church to continue to grow. Amen. As the ushers come forward, let us get ready for the benediction. Let us stand. Is that Brother Sheldon over there? Boy, good to see you, man. Good to see you. I was looking. I thought that was some. NFL football player over there. I know. We so good. Good to see you, man. Let us bow our heads for the benediction. Now, Father God, may the Lord bless thee and keep thee. May the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Now to him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. May the blessed peace of God rest, rule, and abide within you. May it keep us until we meet again. In Jesus Christ's holy name, amen.